Hey everybody, and welcome to another PSPP tutorial video. In this video, we are gonna talk about a one-way ANOVA, how to do that, what it is that we're going to do, what it is the output looks like, and do a little bit of an interpretation. In the last video, I showed you how to in interpret, uh, interpret, import CSV files. And so we have a CSV file now loaded, you can see behind me. And um, just a quick, a uh, little plug for this uh, data set. This is from the data library of JASP, the uh, another kind of free alternative program to PSPP. And uh, <clears throat> it is from Moore, McCabe, and Craig, Introduction to the Practice of Statistics. And so in this particular file, we're going to be doing a one-way ANOVA. And um, you see here that we have... We have... Uh, two variables, friends and score. And so friends is the experimental group that these participants were placed in. So they were placed in one of five groups. This is between subjects design or independent groups design, depend depending on how you learn that, the, that nomenclature, uh, where they were, students were asked to um, provide ratings on the same Facebook profile with one difference, however many friends that profile had. And so here we have 102, we have 302, and then there's 502, and then there's 702, uh, and then there's 902. And there are 134 participants, and these are their ratings on a scale from one to seven, one being the lowest rating and seven being the highest rating. So one of the things that we're gonna do is we wanna set up this friends to be a nominal variable. So in the last video, I renamed it as a nominal kind of measure, but we do need to put in our value, uh, our value labels here. So a value of 102, which is what we're looking for in the data set, is gonna have a value label of one. 302 is going to have a value label of two. And they all have five, they have and two associated with them. Uh, so that's 702 is, so you can see that there are five groups and 902 is five. And we are gonna add that and we are going to hit okay. And if we go back to data view, we can change this view to one of these, I believe, there we go. Show hide value labels is that one. You have to hover over it for it to give you the tooltip there, but you can do that or we can, so we can either show the friend size amount or the group that I had given them. Okay, so group one, group two, so on and so forth. Okay, so one way ANOVA. We go up to analyze, we click on analyze, we go to compare means, it's in compare means, all the way down at the bottom, one way ANOVA. And here is where we put in our information. So our score is going to be a dependent variable. And of course you can see dependent variables has a little S after it. So you can do as many DVs as you want in this one set if they all have the same factor. Uh, and it will do independent tests for all of them. So this is not like inflating alpha or anything like that. But if you wanted to just run a bunch of one-way ANOVAs with the same grouping variable, you can do that here. Uh, but be sure not to connect any of them if the DVs are correlated in some way or you want to run some sort of um, bigger design more complex design than run a multivariate analysis of variance with multiple DVs. Okay, so make sure you do that. And so we're going to put friends in factor over here. That's our independent variable. Uh, factor is what is used as the name here. Statistics, we have two options here for statistics. We can get our descriptives and we can get our homogeneity of variance, which would be Levine's test. So we definitely want to grab those two. Now there are two other little mini app, uh, windows for 
options here. We can get our post hoc tests, so we can do pairwise comparisons and uh, adjust alpha for those. And then we can do contrasts, which are not the same as the ANOVA itself. And so I'm going to ignore contrasts for this particular video. That's a that's a bit high level statistics um, and used a lot of specific use cases for those. So, but we are going to jump into post hoc because there are five independent variables. So let's jump into post hoc. And honestly, the one thing that it does is just gives you which kinds you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Bonferroni. I will go ahead and get Chaffe, and I will go ahead and get Tukey SHD. These are the three most common that you'll see. Bonferroni is pretty standard. Tukey is fairly liberal um, in its alpha uh, correction, so it's a little bit easier to find pairwise uh, pairwise significant changes. And then Chaffe is a little bit more conservative. It's a little bit more difficult to find the uh, differences in these pairs, paired comparisons. Let me go down here and click on continue. And there we go. We are all set up. We go up to OK. Uh, again, paste if you want to get grab the syntax and use it later. So you don't have to go through this whole menu again. But we're going to go up to OK. And we are going to click over to the output. And I'm going to expand this so I don't have to move my picture. And here we are. We have um, our groups here. And of course, we are only using. So one of the things that I, I wanted the 102, 302, 502 is to reduce the amount of numbers in this table. But of course, you would have a key that set this up. So this is. Uh, 102, 302, 502, 702, and 902 friends. Okay, and it gives us all of our descriptive statistics for each of those groups on our DV. So whatever their ratings. Okay, and so we have our N, okay, uh, different size groups and our means. And um, we get our standard deviation, our standard errors, our confidence intervals, our mins, and our maxes. And here is Levine's test. Looks like we are doing pretty okay because I, I have a more con I, I generally use a more conservative 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 alpha level for this assumption violation. So even though it's below 0 0.05, I think we're okay with I think we're okay with homogeneity of variance. I don't think we're we're violating that assumption. And then we get our ANOVA source table, our between groups, our numerator, and our within groups, or error, uh, which is our denominator. Okay, so we get our sums of squares. So this is the variance for each of these. We have degrees of freedom value. So four for our between subjects is just K minus one, where K equals the number of groups that we have. And then uh, our degrees of freedom here is n minus um, k minus 1. So 134 minus k, which is, uh, or actually it's just n minus k, uh, or n minus df minus 1. Either way, you could do that. df1, n minus df1 uh, minus 1, or n minus k which is 129. And then total DF degrees of freedom is N minus 1. Then you do this value, sum of squares, 19.89, divided by 4 to give you the mean square. Okay, mean square between. So this is the numerator of our F ratio. And then to get the denominator of the F ratio, you do 154.87 divided by 129. And that'll give you the mean square error. This value is pretty important for a lot of things. And um, some journals want you to, to report mean square error. So that's what you would put in for your ANOVA there. So to get F, which you can see to the right of this, is 4.97 divided by 1.2 gives me an F of 4, which is uh, has a P-value of 0 0.003 P equals 0 0.003. And then down here, we have all of our pairwide comparisons. So one, two, all of them, two to everyone but itself, and then three all the way down. And so many of these are duplicate pairwise comparisons. And then you can look at this uh, corrected. This is a corrected p-value. 
It doesn't give you a note about that, uh, which it really should, but this is a corrected p-value. So you can use 0 0.05, 0 0.05 corrected as the um, uh, criterion to determine which pairs are significantly different from each other. And um, it looks like uh, group one to two is significant. And let's see. Yep, that's the same one. And then a little bit of two to five. So it looks like for this, and then you can see how Shafe changes. This is now 0.014. And Tuki is essentially uh, essentially mirroring Bonferroni. But some of these values are a little bit lower, like the 0.984 is actually considered one in the Bonferroni test. So you can see that Bonferroni is slightly more conservative than Tuki is, but Shafe is far more conservative. Um, of a pairwise comparison post hoc correction. So this is to say that 300 and some friends on Facebook gives you the social attractive, the highest social attracted attractiveness rating. I definitely will get that one of these days. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, please leave those below. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you like this content, consider subscribing to the channel. Stay tuned for more PSP tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.